Hey everybody, it's just me, LTM. Today's video is about tension. If like me, you're in any online forums to do with circular knitting machines, you'll often see an answer to a question of why is my machine not working? Why am I getting all of these dropped and tucked stitches? At least one of the answers will very often be about tension. What's tension? If you're new to knitting, if you don't do hand knitting, you've probably never heard of this thing called tension. So I thought I would do a little video about tension. Today I'm going to use my Centro machine and I'm going to show you the results of using the same yarn in the machine using the different tension settings. There's three settings on the Centro machine, the hole closest to the machine, which is the smallest hole, the middle hole and the hole that is furthest away from the machine, the largest hole, which is for the loosest tension. So if you're interested to see what difference does tension make, does it actually make any difference to the end result, then hang around and have a watch.
this is the result of the loosest tension possible. So this is the third hole on the centro tension fork. There are a lot of stitches that are not made properly, uh, sections where it has dropped stitches entirely and the whole thing is very loose, it's really uneven. There's another section of dropped stitches here. So I haven't stretched this yet, this is exactly as it came off the machine. So if we just try to measure this um, loosely, loosely I'd say that looks like about 42 centimetres. So here is a close-up of the stitches that has been made on the loosest tension. So again this was the loosest tension. You can see they're very uneven. There's a small section here where they are quite even. Um, but then you've got sections like this where the stitches have just totally been dropped and you can see that that is across the whole item. It's it's not just in the beginning rows, it's not just on one side, it's not just at the same needle all the time. You know, there's there are things wrong with it here, there and everywhere pretty much. Um, there is no way I would use this for a project. I need to be a bit careful because there are drop stitches and... Uh, it's going to come undone if I'm not careful. So just give it a gentleish kind of a stretch. I'm being a bit more gentle than I usually would. Also the yarn did split a little bit. You can see there's a bit of split yarn just there. So stretches significantly as you can see which with a really loose tension you would expect you would expect that it's going to stretch substantially so that is our loosest item note that it also used the most yarn you'll see that I weighed the yarn before and after and using the loosest tension, use the most yarn. If you're a hand knitter, you'll know that kind of stuff. A lot of people that are using these circular knitting machines have never knitted by hand, and they're not aware of these kinds of things. So if you're a hand knitter, that won't be any surprise to you. But if you're first time knitting on these knitting machines, you might not realize that, that if you use a looser tension, it's going to use more yarn. All right, let's look at the next one. So that was the loosest tension for this yarn. Totally didn't work. Then we'll go to the one that was using the, the middle tension hole. So this piece of knitting is a lot more consistent and more even than the previous one. However, there were a number of issues. There were a number of dropped stitches or tucked stitches as I went through, and you can see that in the final product. Now again, I'll measure this one. So the loosest tension one was 42 centimeters, and I'll just measure this one again without really trying to stretch it too much. And interesting, this one is just over 47 centimetres. Using a tighter tension has made a longer item. And this used less yarn than when we used the loosest tension. There's a patch here, here, where the stitches haven't really formed properly. Most of it's good, but there are bits here and there where the stitches just haven't really formed properly. There aren't any dropped stitches, like on the loosest tension one, but there are these funny little sections where the stitches are just really not quite right. Okay, so let's give this one a stretch and see how that goes. Quite a lot of stretch in the long direction and in this direction. I'd say probably not quite as much as the looser tension, and again, that's probably what you would expect. So having given it a bit of a stretch, uh, some of those flaws in the stitches are a bit more obvious. So there's a whole section over here, and then there's you know a couple of sections here and over here and over here. So yeah, a much better result. Just on the reverse, there are some errors here as well. So again, it's it's not necessarily the same needles all the time, although the errors are kind of grouped together. They're not scattered all over like they were with the other piece. So that was using the, the middle tension hole on the centro. Let's have a look at the last one. 
So this piece was used using the smallest tension hole in the tension arm on the Centro knitting machine. The stitching on this seems a lot more consistent. There are still some areas in here though. So this looks like uh, tucked stitches. But there's much fewer of them than on either of the other two pieces. So let's measure this without having done any stretching yet. Again, this is just straight off the machine. And so without trying to stretch it too much, let's see how big this piece is. And this would seem to be 47 centimetres. So not much different to the size of the one using the middle tension hole, but certainly considerably longer by about five centimetres than the one using the loosest tension. So I'll now give this a stretch. I've already shown you the, uh, the flaws in this, which mostly seem to be a few tapped stitches. You can see it's not really stretching as much as the others, and that's because the tension was tighter. So, there we go. I wonder how much, how much longer it is now that I've given it a stretch. So mm, now it's 56 centimetres, so before it was 47 and now it's 56, so that stretched 9 centimetres. That's substantial, really. Let's do this. If I stretch it back the other way, then let's measure it. But you'll notice this is making the stitches more square, whereas stretching it in the other direction makes the stitches more like the V-shape. Okay, and it's back to just over 47 centimetres. If we stretch it this way, it gets skinnier, but it gets longer. So, and it stretches quite well in that direction. And it's now yep, 58 centimetres. So it stretches a good 10 centimetres, which is substantial. And that's four inches for those who don't use centimetres. And you'll remember if you watched that this used the least amount of yarn. So this was a 101 gram uh, ball of yarn. And I believe this only used 50 grams, then the middle tension used the second most amount of yarn, and the loosest tension used the most amount of yarn. So if you're wondering about this tension thing, when you see an answer, you ask a question, you've got a lot of drop stitches and tuck stitches and things are not working very well and you see responses from forums saying tension is potentially the problem and you're thinking really how much of a difference does tension make well I think this has demonstrated that it makes a significant amount of, of difference so if you're having trouble with your circular knitting machine I can strongly recommend that you try doing the same item with different tension because you're going to get a different result. You'll also know now too that changing your tension, even if you're not going to end up with any dropped or tucked stitches, is going to change the size of your project. Significant difference between the length of this one as opposed to the length of these two. This one was 42 centimetres and these ones were both 47 centimetres straight off the machine. So I stretched both of the other ones and then measured them again to see how much they they elongated by it. and I didn't measure this one after I had stretched it so let's give it a stretch and it's kind of going out of the camera view so obviously it's stretching significantly and I think I'm gonna to have to turn this over to stretch it because it's missing stitches down that end okay so that's as much of a stretch as I dare give this and it now is mm, 55 centimeters Fifty-five centimeters, so it still didn't stretch as much as the other ones, even though it's the loosest tension, and you would kind of expect that it would stretch the most, considering too that there's more yarn in this one. It used the most yarn of all of the three tensions, so yeah, interesting. So there you go, an interesting little uh, experiment to demonstrate the differences of using the different tension holes on your Centro knitting machine's tension fork. Now I guess I could also do another one where I just hold the yarn. The issue with that is I can't measure how much tension I'm placing on it and 
whether I'm varying the amount of tension. Even though I might try not to, I, I'm sure I wouldn't be able to hold the same tension for a whole hundred rows. It takes quite a bit of cranking to do a hundred rows and I'm sure that my fingers would fatigue even though I wasn't necessarily consciously changing the tension through my fingers. I'm sure that it would change so it's not really that much of a, an experiment. Although I may try this on my Addy machine which has totally different tension than the Centro machines. So there you are. I hope that was interesting for you. It certainly was really interesting for me. I did not expect this many mistakes in this one. Please, if you're still watching, thank you for hanging around for the whole video. I'd love it if you would like this video. It will help YouTube give you better recommendations for the types of videos that you like. So please like the video, subscribe if you'd like, and I'll see you next time. Bye.